Hello everyone, Dr. Scott here, and welcome back to The Game Closet. Atomic Heart was a game that I was really looking forward to. I pre-downloaded it through Xbox Game Pass over a month in advance in anticipation of playing the game, and then release day came along. And Microsoft wasn't exactly forthcoming with their pre-download prompts. Release day came and went, and it took over two hours to download the actual 75 gigabytes of data to play the game, and I have fast internet. So, two hours later, I was finally playing Atomic Heart. On day two, I had to download another 75 gigabytes. So two hours later, I was playing Atomic Heart. On day three, there was another 15 gigabyte download. So 30 minutes later, I was playing Atomic Heart. The point here is, that it took four hours and 30 minutes of combined downloads before I was able to freely play the game. So hopefully now that there might be a combined update so you don't have to waste so much time waiting around. So I played six hours into this game. I pressed on, I didn't give up for you. And as excited as I was to finally play Atomic Heart, the actual review is only going to be three minutes to save you time. So, here we go. Atomic Heart is a beautiful game set in a post-1950s alternate history futuristic Soviet Union. There is a ton of setup for the story and I believe they could have shortened it a bit. As a matter of fact, you don't really need to do much of anything for about 90 minutes, but hang in there. These two robots are the twins. Got it. They're stirring up a bit of sexual tension on the internet, and I don't want to spoil that for you. The developers gave this game a very unique style. It does have a little bit of a flair that you might remind you of some other games that are similar to it. You are armed with an artificially intelligent glove you call Charles, and you find a fire axe to fight the waves of Soviet robots that go batshit crazy Westworlds. Style. Now here we are after a bit of exposition and we're finally in this elevator that's falling down through this complex and it lands. And here's where the action finally begins after a smoke. You collect bits of stuff to build and upgrade weapons and abilities via an overly sexualized vending machine. The plot itself is complicated and is worth your time, but there's too much exposition in my opinion. It's very easy to compare the gameplay and artistic style to Bioshock, which isn't a bad thing, but Atomic Heart does take a long time to get to a point where you're actually doing something. Atomic Heart has some pretty good humor injected into the dialogue, like this very horny upgrade machine that spews all sorts of tawdry innuendos at you while you are, ahem, inside her doing business. Some people have rage quit about an hour in, and I believe that is a mistake, and I am not known for having a wealth of patience. The action is good and can get quite intense, like there could be tons of these flying, laser-firing sentinels coming after you, or many robots, or infected people who used to work there at the facility. But uh, there are plenty of tasks and puzzles that will also keep you guessing. There are some that I've actually had to sit there and think for a while because I'm like, how the heck do I solve this? You can see where the inspiration was drawn from in this game, like Bioshock, Resident Evil, Singularity, Half-Life, and maybe even Fallout 3 and 4. Now, I must admit that I came close to rage quitting about two hours in. I said, no, I'm not doing it. I'm here for the long haul. I've waited for this game for a long time. But once you get past that hour and a half to two hour mark, the fun begins to happen. The length of the game is between 15 and 32 hours, depending upon if you want to dig into side quests and find every hidden thing in all the little nooks and glory holes. <clears throat> I mean crannies. I am only six hours in and I am going to keep going because I finally hit the atomic sweet spot. If you can be patient, Atomic Heart is worth waiting through the muck to get to the good stuff. However, it may not be worth the $70 price tag to some. And that is the state of most games nowadays, especially when the replay value is really low. That's three minutes and here are my final thoughts. So if you feel like blowing $70, Atomic Heart is an actually pretty good game if you feel like you can get through all the long-ass updates and the long tirades of exposition just so you can start the game. Why the hell am I here? I don't even know any of these people. 
Thank you for subscribing to Game Closet. It's absolutely free, and you can help us get to our next goal of 1,000 subscribers. Hit the like mitten so YouTube will share our videos to more and more cool people just like you. We will see you very, very soon.